All right, here we are in the last section where we will be animating and making our own video. So probably notice that I turned off these gizmos. If you like to look at it without all of the obstruction and cluttered details, you can simply click on these buttons up here and they will get rid of all of the gizmos and all of the overlays. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of this camera for right now. And I'm just gonna focus on the actual animation part. But before I actually animate it, I'm gonna bring in an empty cube that I can use to help me rig an animation. Before I do that, I want it to come in right at this world origin. So I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna replace that cursor back into the world origin. Now I can use the shift right mouse button to try and place it there. And that's probably pretty close, but it's not perfect. Um, I'm also gonna come back into the shaded mode because it's gonna be a little bit easier for me to work in the shaded mode. So I won't have to worry about being bogged down. I'm also gonna get rid of all of this other stuff though. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all of the lights. I'm not gonna turn off the camera. I will need the camera. I'm gonna turn off all of the lights for right now. And that's gonna help me move a little bit faster in my animation. That cursor isn't really placed at the world origin. I can snap it to the world origin though by coming up to object, left click, come down to snap. And there's a selection here for cursor to selected, or I can select cursor to world origin. That's the one that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click that. And now it's perfectly at the world origin. So now if I hit shift A for adding, and I wanna add in an empty, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in an empty cube. And now you'll see we've dropped this cube down here in the center of the world. And I'm gonna go ahead and size it up so it's bigger than everything that it's going to be animating inside of. Now there's one thing that I'm gonna do, and I do this usually earlier on, I just kind of forgot about it. I need to apply the scales and the transforms and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and click each one of these objects and I'm gonna use Command or Control A and I wanna apply all transforms and I'm gonna do that with both of these. So Command and Control A, apply all transforms and there we go, that's fine. We don't really need to worry about the rest of these things because they are not gonna be moving, so they should be just fine. I'm gonna grab this empty and I'm going to scale it up. I don't wanna size both of them up. I wanna grab the empty and I wanna hit scale and I wanna size it up a little bit in the Y just so it pushes past beyond these sides and it kinda of, you know, emulates the look of my actual object. Scale, I'm gonna scale it in the X as well. Maybe right about there, that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and animate this. So let's go back to the camera mode so I can see exactly where I'm starting from. So right away, I know I want to use this empty, but before I can use the empty, I actually need to parent these two items to the empty. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and left click on the triangle and then I'm gonna shift click the button and then shift click my empty. If you can't hit the empty because again, it's you know it's kind of small, you can always shift click up here and it'll do the exact same thing. Now you wanna make sure that the empty is the active object in your scene. It'll have this little gray square around it and that's how you know. And also you can tell that it's slightly different color than the other two objects. It'll be this lighter orange by default. Um, you'll notice the other two objects are the darker orange. Now to parent them, Command or Control P is going to allow you to parent. Just go ahead and parent it to the object. And now if I only select the empty and I hit rotate Z, you'll see that it's rotating all of the objects. Now this is great, this is what we want. I'm actually just going to maybe rotate a little bit. I wanna start it in a different area and then I want them to maybe like spin around a little bit on their own axes and then I'll have them come together and maybe spin around a little bit more and that'll probably be the end of the animation. So it's gonna be a really simple animation. Let's see what frame rate we're gonna be working in. I think I'm gonna work in 30 frames per second. If you'd like to work in 24 frames per second, you're more than welcome to. You could work in 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second. It's not really important how fast you're working because we are going to be timing our animation the way that we want. We're not gonna be speeding it up or slowing it down in post later. All right, so in order to check what your frame rate is, we're gonna come over to the output properties. It looks like a little printer. Go ahead and left click on that. Check out the frame rate. Right here, we're at 24 frames per second. I'm just gonna speed this up to 30 frames per second just to keep it a little bit easier. When I look down here on my timeline, I can see that it's 30 frames per second. I'm also gonna take a look at my resolution. Right now it's set to 1920 by 1080. And if you want to go up to like four or 8K, you can. But you know, my computer will catch on fire if I try to do that. So it's not gonna be worth it for me. So next I need to figure out how long do I want my animation to actually be. I'm gonna come down here to the end of the animation and I'm gonna go ahead and click in this box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna first type in the frame rate, which is 30. And then I'm gonna use the asterisk, which will indicate the multiplication symbol or times. And let's say I want it to be four seconds long. So if I hit four and then I hit enter, it's automatically going to calculate that for me and it's gonna set it to 120 frames. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna take the end of this bar and I'm just going to start grabbing it and pulling it to the left until I only have 120 frames. That's gonna make it a little easier for me when I'm grabbing keyframes and moving them around if I need to. 
if the animation is only going to last four seconds, then everything's going to be moving fairly fast. So I'm going to come to frame 30 and I'm going to hit N on my keyboard to pull out the transforms. You, you don't have to do this. You could come over here to the object properties here and you could do the same thing over here, but I just think it's a little bit easier to work in this little item section here. I'm going to go ahead and set these keyframes because I want them to come back to right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click, insert keyframes. You could also use the I key on your keyboard. And I also want to select the rotations and I wanna insert keyframes here as well. All right, so those are set. Now I'm gonna to come to frame one. I want it to start off in a different position. I wanna push this triangle out a bit, but you'll notice that I only selected the keyframes for one item. So I have to go in at frame 30 and select all the keyframes for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the triangle and I'm going to hit I and then come over to rotation, hit I. I'm going to select the box, hit I, hit I. And I want to make sure that my keyframes are still set for my empty. All right, now I can come over to frame one and now I can click on whatever I want to animate first. I'm going to go ahead and animate this triangle first. So I'm going to push it out in location and the location that I'm going to want to push it out is in the X because right now the X is forward. So if I increase the location, you notice I can push it just off screen and that looks pretty good. Now I have to set that keyframe. I can right click and set insert keyframe and that will set that. And now if I press play, you'll see that it comes back and it resets in there as it hits frame 30. So that's kind of the premise behind animation here inside of Blender. It's really simple and of course it can get way more confusing using all kinds of control rigs and whatnot. But in its basic form, all you're doing is setting a keyframe, changing its location or its rotation, and then setting another keyframe in a different point in time. So let's go ahead and let's animate everything together. I'm gonna go ahead and push this back to frame one and I'm gonna move the button back as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and push this in the negative. Now, I don't wanna go back so far that it pushes behind my scene. So I might wanna to check to see how far I can go. So right around here is where it starts to, maybe right there will probably be good. And that's about equal distance. So now they'll travel right around the same amount of distance, right around the same time. So that'll work out pretty well. Now I'm gonna go ahead, hit I, and that's going to replace that keyframe. I'm gonna give the triangle a little bit of rotation. Now that's gonna just give it a little bit more interest. Now I gotta figure out which axis is it actually rotating on. I think it's rotating on the X axis. So if I rotate it around the X axis, you can see it starts to spin around. Maybe we'll have it spin like just a little bit, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and right click, insert that keyframe. And now I'm gonna go back into the camera view. And when I hit space bar, you'll see that they come together and it kind of rotates in. So let's go ahead and we're gonna give it a little bit more animation. So once it starts to come in here, I really would like it to start spinning around maybe in the opposite direction. So that's what we're gonna use to animate the empty. So the empty as of right now, once it hits 30, it is going to stay still because we haven't animated it yet at all. So I'm gonna take this keyframe and I'm gonna push it over to frame 28. And then once it hits 28, I'm gonna have it start to rotate around. But to do that, I actually need to go to where I want it to stop. So maybe I want it to stop right around frame 40. So I'm gonna to go to frame 40 and I'm gonna rotate along the Z axis. And I just wanna rotate it maybe like a little bit over 360 degrees, maybe somewhere right around here. And that might be too fast. We'll take a look at how that is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit I to set that keyframe. And now I'm gonna pull it all the way back and let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's way too fast. So. Sometimes things maybe seem a little bit slower than they actually are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click off here and I want to select just this keyframe. Let's give us a little bit more space here. I wanna select just these, this keyframe and I wanna push this keyframe maybe to like frame 50. Let's see if that slows down enough. Oh, that looks good. It stops really abruptly and that, I get it, that looks pretty terrible, but don't worry, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna fix that here in just a minute. Maybe come back to frame 80 and now what we'll do is we will have it come back over here to the left, hit I to set that keyframe and then at frame 120, it'll be right here. I to set it. Now let's watch the entire animation. And that looks pretty good. Uh, and the reason it already looks pretty good is because has Bezier keyframes already applied to it. Let me show you what I mean. So if I come to edit down to preferences and I look at my animation, my default interpolation is set to Bezier curve. So 
This is usually where I'll leave it for for animation. There are times where you want to switch it over to linear, especially if you're doing some kind of looping, like five second looping animations or something, then yes, absolutely. But for the most part, Bezier will give you probably the best looking animation. And of course, we'll have to go in there and refine it as well. So let's go ahead and click off here. And I'm going to jump over to this animation because it already has the dope sheet set up here. And even though I don't really use the dope sheet very much, it is kind of nice to be able to look at it whenever you want. I'm not going to be using this properties editor. So I'm going to left click and I want to change this to the graph editor because the graph editor is pretty much where I'm going to be doing most of my animation work. So I'm going to right click over here, join area. I don't need this extra one. And I actually would like to click zero to look exactly at what this is doing. So down here, we can kind of see what's taking place. It's spinning around and then it's coming back. So most of this is in this Z transform that I really want to change. So I'm going to come over here and where it says empty action, I'm going to go ahead and right click here and it's the Z Euler rotation. So if I click this on and off, you can see where it's at. I don't really, I can't see it. Like it doesn't look like anything because it's so big. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit period and it's gonna zoom in just like if I was editing something in the 3D viewport. So it's gonna go ahead and zoom in automatically for me. And we can see what our animation curve looks like. So let me go ahead and watch it one more time, hit space and we can see what it's doing. And that looks really good. I think I might pull this curve out just a little bit more and let's see what that looks like. All right, so what that's doing is it's, it pulled out this portion of it, which wasn't what I thought it did. So let me go ahead and bring that back. And I think what I actually wanted to do was make this a little bit more violent, not violent, but like start a little bit faster. There we go. Oh, but now it's moving in multiple directions. Yeah, so I don't know if I like that. And I think that is because I accidentally, let me see, period, might have moved another rotation here. Yeah, see here, right here. Um, I, I didn't mean to do that, but we don't want that. So you sometimes have to be careful with these tangent handles. You wanna make sure that you deselect things. Something like that. Now let's take a look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good, but there's one thing that I don't like and it's toward the, the end here. So let's, let's go ahead and select this, press period. Yeah, so I want this very last one to be Oh, okay, they're all selected, that's why. These should be very fluid. So in order to make them fluid, you're really gonna have to kind of uh, do like so, something like that. Let's take a look at that. There we go, that, that looks good. So all I did is I rounded these out a little bit and that gives it a smoother transition into the next animation. And of course I, you know, extended this because I wanted this really to ease in more so than to, you know, I wanted to, to slow down quite a bit as it gets to the end there. So it has this really big animation here in the front and then it kind of slows down. You can see it has like a nice bounce. Um, there's another way, like if you don't want to go in and you don't want to manually handle your own tangents, you can always hit the T key and that will give you these uh, set keyframe interpolations. So you can change the Bezier curves here or you can change it to constant or linear. You can also use any one of these easings and of course you have these dynamic effects as well. So like a bounce would give you like, I'll show you, I'll show you what this does. I can always uh, command and control Z to undo it. So let me go ahead and hit T and let's just do a bounce and then I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> I mean, it looks cool, but you know, not exactly what I was looking for for this specific animation. But if that's what you're looking for, I mean, you can get some interesting animations and not have to do very much work. So I'm gonna go ahead and command and control Z to undo that. And now it's nice and smooth. And now I'm gonna come back out into the layout. I'm gonna hit zero to go into the camera mode. I'm gonna turn off all these gizmos here, go back into Eevee. And let's, if I click on this little button right here, it'll jump all the way to the beginning of the video and I can go ahead and hit enter. There you go. And that looks pretty good. Um, there's a couple things that we can add here. 
Uh, one of the things that we could do is we can actually bake in these reflections. So I'm going to go ahead and shift A and I'm going to bring in a light probe reflection cube map. Hit S and I want to scale it up. I don't see it because I can't see it because I don't have any of the overlays or any of that stuff. So S, let's go ahead and uh, turn it up quite a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and activate the all the other geometry and lights and whatnot so that they will actually be able to bake in there. Uh, I'm going to hit zero so we can kind of see what this is doing. I'm going to come over to the render settings or the render properties and let's just click out of that and let's add the ambient occlusion. We will add screen space reflections, add some motion blur. And then I'm also going to come down to this indirect lighting and I want to bake this indirect lighting. So left click on that, take a few seconds or whatever, and it will bake that lighting into your scene, which is kind of nice. All right, so now it's set up. We have the animation. We have everything the way that we want it. Let's go into the output properties and we need to set a place for this to actually go. So right down here under output, you see it's going to this temp file. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click on that little file indicator. And I'm gonna just put this on my desktop. You can put it wherever you want and I need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this play button tutorial and I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. Now we have to decide on what type of output we want to do. We can do this in a PNG, so it'll give out a series of PNG files, and but then you'll have to go into another program and you'll have to load those in. So you could use DaVinci Resolve and you could bring it in as an image sequence full of PNG files. And that definitely works. In fact, because we're working in 30 frames per second, you will have 30 frames in one second. So you won't really have to set anything up. It'll just bring it in perfect for you. As long as your frame rate in your DaVinci Resolve or whatever nonlinear editor you're using is set to 30 frames per second. I'm not gonna do that right now. I will have a video on how to do that a little bit later. I'm actually gonna use this really simple to use FFmpeg video. So I'm gonna go ahead and left click on that. And then I'm gonna come down to the encoding because I wanna left click on that and I wanna make sure that it is a container and encoding that I want. So I'm gonna come over to this Mastroka and I'm gonna turn this to QuickTime because I'm on a Mac. And now I'm gonna come down to video. Let's, let's give us a little bit more room here so we can see this stuff. Codec H.264 is absolutely fine. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on that. Medium quality for output quality is okay, but I'm gonna go with perceptually lossless. I feel like you're gonna get a much better quality there. The rest of this is just fine. I'm not gonna play around with that. There is one more thing that I want to make sure. I'm gonna come back into the render settings and right here where it says renderer, right now it's set to 64 samples, which is okay. It probably would give me an okay result. I'm just gonna turn this up to 300 because I want the best result possible, but I also don't wanna be here all day. It's only a four second animation, so it shouldn't be too bad and I'm going to render it out. And then uh, you've already seen it because it was the, whatever the video you saw in the very beginning of the video, just click the render animation and away you go. You should be able to play your video. You can put it up on Instagram, put it up on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you want to put it. Um, I hope you guys got something out of this video. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.